Welcome back to the Science of Rock. Now more of the Tea Party and L'Orchestre Symphonique de Trois-Rivières. Watch what happens when a song starts. After just a few beats, heads will start to nod as people's brains analyze the rhythm of the song. See the differences between the rests and the notes. The brain changes its own internal rhythm to match that of the song. It's called entrainment. Sometimes it's not just heads that start moving, but people's entire bodies. Only humans can change their internal rhythms like this. They burn a savage soul The twisted one and lust I feel this life slipping by I can feel this life slipping by Desire is a state A state of ill repair Ill prepared to cope Ill prepared to care I feel this life slipping by I can feel this life slipping by Time and time life's left me only Feeling sick, feeling scared Love is strong, love is strong I'll go on and on, on and on yeah! We looked at Western listeners and Japanese listeners uh, perceptions of emotional meaning in Japanese music, North Indian uh, music, uh, Hindustani ragas, and Western music as well, and found that in fact they can uh, decode the emotional meaning, uh, what was intended by the musician in all three cultures, and they can do that by attending to some basic elements of the music. I can feel this change and it's strong Time and time I've slept to me only Feeling sick, feeling scared Love is strong, love is strong Musicologists and more informed sociologists have said for a long time that meaning is encoded in sonic information. The quality, the type of bass line indicates a particular worldview as opposed to a different worldview. How bass lines come together with the phrasing of a vocal line, uh, a particular groove that a drummer is setting up and so on, all of that bespeaks a way of seeing the world. And when you have music that represents a very different way of seeing the world, you have your symbolic universe being challenged. What that means is you have your identity being challenged. There are many aspects of a song that you know can be appealing to an arranger, uh, but one that I like to, to find in a rock song is the sort of uneven rhythms and syncopations and, um, and oftentimes the, the, the weird modes of music, just like what we have here. We have an Indian modes of, of, you know, and melodies and sort of thing like that. And this is always challenging for an arranger, actually, so, and that's why their material is so good, actually, to be orchestrated.
actually still have, you know, the boxes in front of me because I found that um, you know, being being the front man and having to communicate with the audience, um, in ears for me, like the in ear monitors, uh, doesn't allow for that uh, that necessary synthesis between you know the the band and, and the audience, like especially with me being the ambassador, you know, between everything that's going on. Not to take anything away from bass players, but rock bands are driven by two main forces, drums and guitars. That's why on most rock tours, these instruments get their very own technicians. For the tea party, that's guitar technician Trevor Gilchrist and drum tech Paul Atkins. Paul oversees a small army that will spend a few hours assembling and shining the massive drum kit at the center of tonight's show. Paul has been traveling with the band for years, so he knows exactly where drummer Jeff Burrows wants his drums to be and how he wants them to sound. On the other side of the stage, guitar technician Trevor Gilchrist sets up shop. He's responsible not just for unpacking the dozens of stringed instruments, but for keeping them in tune and in shape. So he travels with a portable guitar shop, ready to handle any repairs the instruments need. During the concert, you can see Trevor after just about every song, helping Jeff Martin make the change from one guitar to the next. Don't call these guys roadies. They're musicians, they're technicians, and they're practically part of the band. Coming up, we'll see Trevor in action and find out why the best shows are the ones some band members can't remember. Sister Amanda, which one?